Hello, all you lovely people out there. How is everyone doing? I'm Kate Hill, bringing you the best unbiased and honest content on property, along with some fantastic hints and tips. And don't forget, everyone, if you have a little watch of one of my other videos, my location profile videos, you can download one of those reports completely for free. Right now, stay tuned for all your latest property news. The private sector will be encouraged to work alongside all levels of government to help deliver on the federal government's National Housing Accord, which is designed to deliver a million new homes in five years from 2024. In Australia's most recent federal budget, the Treasurer says that all levels of government will work with institutional investors and the construction sector to help address the chronic shortages of supply. He says that the government will also provide $350 million in additional federal funding to deliver 10,000 affordable homes over five years from 2024. Under this accord, the states and territories will be tasked with fast tracking zoning, planning and land release for social and affordable housing. The accord, they say, recognises most of this supply that needs to come from the market with government playing a key role in enabling and kick-starting investment, Chalmers says. The new Treasurer's Investor Roundtable will also explore further ways to promote investment in housing, bringing together leaders from the investment community, superannuation funds, the major banks and global asset managers. Do you see a glaring omission there? Unfortunately, absolutely no one from the actual property industry was invited to attend. So no one who actually understands what's going on out there will be able to have a voice. So we'll see what happens there. Mr. Chalmers, I am ready and available. Give me a call. I will tell you what you need to do. The $3.3 trillion superannuation industry and institutional investors are being encouraged to direct more money into residential housing, with funding for the push included in that federal budget. More resources will be allocated through Treasury and financial regulators to help resolve regulatory barriers for super funds and other institutional investors to invest more in housing. Super funds and other institutional investors already invest billions of dollars in commercial real estate, but they have a relatively little exposure to the residential housing sector. And that is, of course, because like all other investment, it's been made almost impossible for the funds to borrow. In September, the federal government announced that it will make up to $575 million from the National Housing Infrastructure Facility, the NHIF, available for investment in affordable housing as part of a plan to lure the super fund sector into housing investment. You don't need to lure them, guys. Just make it more possible. The NHIF is a $1 billion facility that offers loans and grants and equity finance for housing enabling infrastructure, such as utilities and roads. The super fund sector says that it needs a federal government top up to invest in affordable housing as it delivers lower rental yields. Affordable property markets are performing well, with analysis by PropTrack showing that outer suburban markets are holding steady. Median prices in southwest and outer southwest Sydney, including the suburbs like uh, Liverpool, Wetherill Park and Campbelltown, remain 4% higher than last year, compared with more expensive markets such as the northern beaches in Sydney, where the median is down 1%. Melbourne's west from Wyndham and Melton remains 3% higher than this time last year, with areas in the southeast from Chadstone to Bunyip 2% higher. The more expensive inner south is down by 6%. Ipswich in Brisbane's west and Adelaide's north both remain 20% higher than this time last year. Perth's southwest is up 9%. A prop track economist says that reduced 
Borrowing capacity means that some buyers are having to look further afield when buying, particularly those seeking larger properties. But of course, as you'll know from your Auntie Kate here, it's not the only reason why these areas continue to grow. Rents have hit a new record high in the past quarter, according to Domain's latest rental report. It shows that combined capital city house rents are at 1.9% in the three months to September, with the average price of renting a house now 530 bucks a week. And unit rents are up 6.5% over the quarter with the average weekly rent for a unit now $490. Domain's chief of research and economics says that the increases are a result of misalignment between supply and demand. That's one way of putting it. In good news for investors, uh, unit gross yield are continuing to rebound from the lows recorded during the height of the pandemic. Gross rental yields for houses are also improving and are at their highest point on record. So it is a good time for investors to enter the Australian rental market, which will help alleviate some supply pressure. It will help alleviate a lot of supply pressure. And I've been saying that for months. Gross rental yields for houses and units are 3.25 and 4.1% respectively. Now I will keep you posted on all things property from around Australia and maybe beyond as our year progresses. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and the like buttons if you are enjoying all my free content. I will see you again really soon. Bye.